You know, my idea with this class is that, uh, you know, it's sort of a sort of a lecture, but it's not to be a lecture. It's going to be, my, my intention is that it is a dialogue, right? It may be a dialogue in which I talk much more than you do, but see, why, why do I call it a dialogue? If I can make you, while I'm saying something, you're reflecting, you're thinking about your own experiences in your countries uh, with, you know, uh, with the the experience that you have also with technology, if you're thinking this, this thing that Alex is saying makes sense, well, this doesn't make sense to my reality or whatever, right? That's already a dialogue that is happening inside your brain, you know? Uh, so it's, it, it has to be something light, you know, it's not, uh, well, I don't want to put you to sleep when I'm talking, but I, hopefully I'm talking about things that are meaningful enough that uh, I have you engaged. Um, this thing of recording, I think it, it's good because you have the material later. At the same time, it makes my class less, let's say, dynamic than it would be because I, I sit here instead of walking around, you know. But my experience, you know, uh, uh, during the, uh, and mainly after the pandemic is that this is a good thing to have, you know, to, to, to make sure that you have uh, some material that you can go back to. Although in the morning, the, the first half of the, the, the class, you know, the, my OBS here crashed. I don't know what happened, so I missed part of it. But I think it's it's worth. And again, if it's if this is going to be a, a dialogue, a, if we're going to be talking, it's good that we are comfortably seated and that we can we have um, you know we, we have the, the opportunity of, of of doing this in a very relaxed way. But feel free also uh, and, and feel free if if, if 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 at any time you think, well, gee, Alex is, is putting me to sleep with his. It's not never going to be a lot of slides, right? Because what I what what I really want to show here is the papers. And my idea is to, conv to convince you, or to, sh to highlight the main ideas that I think that you should pay attention in these papers, and to uh, try to convince that this is a good reading for you to... It was good that during lunchtime here, uh, I, I was hearing you talking about the possibilities of becoming entrepreneurs, having a startup, or working for another company. Uh, these are all things that concern to this uh, uh, class, because that means, even if we're still, you know, starting in our uh, professional careers that you're you're already trying to see the let's say the, have, have a, a broader perspective uh, of the the problems of this uh, business uh, world in which we we you will be working right uh, the even even uh, ways ideas of how to evade uh, paying taxes uh, that's something that uh, in a in an eth in a in an ethical way, that's something that uh, entrepreneurs and, and executives should always think about. We, we should never pay more taxes than the absolute necessary, not the absolute necessary not to go to jail, right? The absolute necessary uh, uh, with respect to what society uh, um, um, requests, right? Uh, paying taxes uh, is a duty, but it should also be considered as our share of contribution uh, to build a world for, for we, in which we live, right? So you it makes don't, you hmm? don't take too, too much of taxes. We we also yeah we we all think that we pay too, uh, too much taxes. I, I mean, there's no one who will claim that they they don't pay more taxes than they should. But you know why we pay taxes? For that reason uh, that we had already discussed here. It it there are things that are more easily done together than than each one on on their own. For example, if each one of us had to collect the garbage. Uh, in our cars or whatever and take it to wherever it's going to be processed that would be crazy right so we prefer to have that as a municipality uh, we pay a municipality ta tax and part of that tax is to make sure that the city is clean uh, and that and that there is a, a service that is managed by an ego by someone who, who has the, the perspective of the whole city and will, it will decide when to collect the, 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 the garbage from, from each suburb or from which street, from each street and so on and so forth. Uh, I know that we all, uh, we're not very trustful of our politicians because they give us enough reasons for us not to trust them uh, that much. So we should keep uh, fiscalizing. But at the same time, we, we have to understand that there are things that work better when done uh, uh, you know, for, in a larger scale. And those are the things for which we are paying our share as taxpayers, right? Uh, taxes are not in the past. Well, even in the past, when taxes were paid to the king, 
in whatever way you paid to the king, you know, people paid taxes to the king. Well, first because otherwise they would be killed, yeah. uh, but 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 also because paying they got protection. So uh, you know uh, th that was the idea. Okay, you, you you pay for the protection that you will get. Again, people probably didn't like paying. They, they would prefer that their neighbors paid, and they, they didn't have to pay. But again, it has to be a common uh, effort, um, and, uh, and and there's reasons to explain why we should pay taxes, and there there, there are good reasons also for us to be uh, to fiscalize how those taxes are being used. There is really no uh, uh, arguable ar arguably good reason for you to to not to pay taxes, right? Because it would mean it would mean simply that you want to be a free rider. You you want you know a free rider in the sense that you you always want to get a lift with your your colleague when uh, he or she is driving to to school, uh, but you're never able to offer a lift uh, to show to, to show that reciprocity and to, to I mean to make sure that it's not you who 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 who, who, are exp who is exploiting uh, your friend all the time. That, that that is a relationship in which everyone benefit from which everyone benefits, right? But it's important that uh, we think uh, we, we shouldn't pay more taxes than uh, than required or than uh, than ne necessary uh, in terms of ethically to make sure that we are we are helping develop uh, our own societies, uh, but also uh, legally, because uh, if we if we're simply not concerned about that, we are we are losing our competitiveness in a in a market which is still very which is very competitive. All right, so when you pay taxes that your competitor is uh, able to avoid in a legal and ethical way, you're actually throwing money in the, the, in, in the, the garbage bin, right? From, from the perspective of that business, you may still be contributing to a, to a, to a, a better society, but you're the one who's you, you're sort of, you're paying the bill alone. Uh, so what, what a good uh, entrepreneur or, or executive or uh, wants is that the rule, the rule is set for everyone and and then uh, that everyone obeys the the rules because that means that we're leveled and we can compete uh, on 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 the quality of our products or on the quality of our work and not simply on the fact that someone has a, a another kind of advantage right uh, but anyway so it was interesting to hear uh, that conversation there because it means that at least sometimes and it has already happened that I taught a, a group that was too technically focused and they kept, uh, I kept having the impression that all the time that they said, well, Alex, we would wish that you were here uh, to teach us a little more about the leave that we are cutting as a, an ant. And, and again, I'm not uh, making any judgment. The ant, the monkey and the, the ego here in my, in my allegory, in my metaphor, none, none of these animals is more important than the other, right? Everyone has a, a very important role in the, in the organization. We do need people that are very um, competent in, in tiny things, but they're, they're the ones that know the detail of that, and we need people with a larger perspective. And in fact, I think the best, uh, the best people in the organization world, organizational world are those that have a good, solid uh, knowledge of the, the, of the, I shouldn't call the basics of, of, the, of, of, of the end's work, but at the same time develops a view of the whole that only the ego can have. About the forest. Okay. Uh, well, uh, talking about that, uh, the, the, the second paper. So, so the first paper, the, the, the main thing that you, you should remember about uh, about um, uh, Nic Nicholas Carr's uh, text on IT doesn't matter is that idea of think of technology always as proprietary or infrastructural. You don't want to develop infrastructural. Uh, oh, sorry, you, you don't want to develop infrastructural technology inside your organization, and that's the case even if you are. An IT uh, uh, company. Think, for example, uh, if uh, um, Ezijelak decided that it wanted to, instead of having that using the voltage that comes from the the, the, the the utility company that provides them with, with energy, they don't like 220 volts. They decided, for whatever reason, they want to use 300 volts or whatever. Right? That would, you know, making all that transformation wouldn't. I, I'm sure that it wouldn't make any additional students to enroll, right? Nobody, nobody cares about. Of course, we all care that we have lights, right? That uh, we, we don't have to have classes in the dark. So having electricity and that we, we can project our slides and that we can 
you know, run uh, programs in our computers. Having electricity is a must. Uh, a university without electricity uh, wouldn't happen. But electricity is um, infrastructural technology. We, after the world has decided that it's 220 or 110 in some places, uh, we will go with that without discussing it. Even if we think that there would be a, a better alternative, we'll say this has become standard uh, and uh, standards are to be benefited by everyone. We agree on a standard so that we don't have to be creative about that. And then we compete <laughs> in something else. So that was Nicholas Carr's idea. If, for those of you, uh, um, Alina was a little scared with the number of pages because there we have the, the, the paper by Nicholas Carr and then responses by people who read uh, uh, his paper and had their own opinion and of course uh, people with uh, interesting ideas. I, I have to confess to you that I have not read those replies. I, I just uploaded a new copy of, uh, the, the, of that paper here and it came with those re replies. I had never seen them before. Uh, they were not originally, they, they were of course not published in the same issue of, uh, of um, Harvard Business Review but it's something that I'm interested in. I, I will read it uh, uh, sometime. Uh, and uh, but anyway, uh, it's only the first half of those, or, or only the first 12 or 13 pages of those 30 pages that you had there, that relate to that paper. Um, now we have an, an, another uh, another one. Uh, this this was published in the IBM Systems Journal again, 1993, uh, the first uh, time it was published, and, and then it was republished in 99. Uh, these guys, Henderson and. Yeah, uh, Venkatraman, not Henderson, right? Venkatraman. No, yeah, they saw my talk. He's, he's, he's from your part? Same, same language as you. Yeah. yeah. You, you will see a lot of this. Uh, so your, your uncle has, yeah. your uncle here has uh, written several uh, papers in the 90s. He was a very productive uh, information systems um, <coughs> writer. Uh, and uh, so, so thank him. When, when you meet him in the streets in, in India, tell him that Alex and him, I, I, don't know, I, I don't know him. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the authors here I've, I have met, but uh, this, uh, this uh, Ben Katraman, uh, he's, he's a previous generation, although he may still be, you know, these guys that wrote in the 90s, some of them are still around, you know, uh, in conferences and things like that. But anyway, uh, tell your uncle there that uh, we enjoyed uh, what he did. And one of the things that I like the most about papers by, by, by this, Ben Katraman and Henderson, uh, they both worked together in many papers. Uh, I'm not sure who was the advisor of the other, but uh, one of them advised the other one in, in, in a PhD thesis or something. Um, I don't know if Henderson was in Katraman's advisor or vice versa, because uh, I, I mean, there, there are many Indian uh, professors in the States and there have been many Indian professors in information systems from, from, from the beginning. So uh, what these guys, uh, and one, thing, one interesting thing about them I, that I like about their papers is that they have the same problem and solution of whoever is discussing a topic that is not digital, zero or one, so they have to, there's a lot of argumentation that needs to be done there, to which we are not accustomed when we are uh, hard science students that are, you know, we usually, usually have short texts. Uh, many times we read a text, if we have to read a deduction of a formula or something, we spend, a, you know, two hours reading one page, right? This year, I, all of these texts, I promise you, they are there, you, you just read, you, you can read in a relaxed way, it's, there's not, nothing, in fact, if there is anything that is complex in the, in the mind process of the ego, what happened there? I don't know what happened, let's use uh, Bill Gates' strategy, see if it works, sometimes it does. I think it needs some time to cool the, the, the fan. But anyway, while, while this, uh, we see if this uh, starts working again. Uh, one of the things that these guys uh, do that is that, that I like is they usually have in their papers they have a modo. Uh, they have a, a modo that explains the whole idea of the paper. Unfortunately, if you look at the modo without having read the paper you don't understand it, right? But after you have read the paper once, you look at the modo and you remember all the, the main uh, points of the, the paper. So this is something that I enjoy in your uncle's uh, work there. It's, uh, uh, and let's see. It has not worked yet. Yeah. How long does it take? Do you know? 
Oh, right. Okay, so it will turn green. Uh, well, when, when it shows, uh, uh, when it's green, there we'll, uh, I'll show you there. Uh, this the, 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 this paper by the, these guys here is about how um, to think uh, uh, technology, uh, information technology, as a tool uh, to develop uh, the the strategic uh, strategic plan of an organization. Right. In fact, we have uh, a couple of papers that will go this way. In the past, people simply thought, well, technology is there to support the business, right? But uh, is it all that technology can do? Just support the business? For many companies, maybe if it supports the business and if it does that in a way that it costs uh, less than it uh, provides value. I mean, again, in, that, uh, in line with that concern about a productivity paradox, about concerning with uh, Nicholas Carr's idea that IT, sometimes if you, if you take the wrong decision, um, you are actually throwing money in the garbage bin. Uh, maybe if, if, the te if technology simply supports the business, that is already great, right? It means that at least you're not throwing money in the, gar in the garbage. But, but technology can be used to do other things than just supporting the business. It can, uh, in fact, uh, be used to change the business. I don't know how many business wants to be changed. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let, let's see if it will, because it was not recognizing the HDMI here. And 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 sometimes sometimes when I say uh, Bill Gates strategy is it is because Bill Gates once was doing a presentation on on Windows or something. And then uh, he got a green, uh, one of those blue screens that, uh, that, that Microsoft uh, Windows used to, ha to, to have. And then he, he very quickly just reset his uh, computer. And then people now say that when, when, when we don't know what, you know, when we, we don't know what went wrong, we reset and Bill Gates' uh, logic works. So this, anyway, this is uh, the paper. Let me show you the model. Uh, you will see that it's not very understandable straight away because you didn't read the paper. But hopefully, uh, we will be able to manage to understand this. Uh, I don't know if it's still hitting, if it's going to get any, uh, get any clearer than that. I'll just maybe if I do a little of this and... and Okay. Yeah, the fact, uh, pro probably the images, uh, because this is in, in the in the, the journal. This I, I think that if you, if, you, if you turn this one off, it's better. Yeah. And the, can you turn the, uh, on the other ones at the back? Or this is. Uh, oh, go, go like that for now. If you, if you promise that you're not going to sleep, and then. It's okay. You know, there, there's another thing about, uh, well, I, I don't want to say anything against, against the French engineering because I, I'm sure that I would see the same sort of things happening in Brazil. But engineers, please, if you're thinking of a, a classroom, uh, you, you have to talk to, to, to teachers. Uh, and teachers will probably tell you, you know, now, and it's not now, we, we've had these this, uh, projectors here for over 20 years or so. Now that we have projectors, sometimes we have to turn off the light. But we don't want people to go to sleep, so maybe some lights at the back, yeah. lit, and the ones here, but they usually don't go like that, right? So uh, if they were like this, uh, if, they, if they were three, or even if it was two blocks, but like this, it would be okay. You turn off here, and you could and turn on there. But when it's like that, there's no way you can, can do this. It only shows the, the, the risks of our, our engineering being only in the hands of the, engin the engineers. The engineers being too powerful in their designing of uh, the systems without talking to the customers or maybe talking to the customers uh, without the customers uh, uh, having a complete understanding of, of, of how things are going to be used. So, so the engineer is, is I think is, there's a double fault there because the, the engineer is trained in processes. The engineer should be able to try and elicit and, and obtain uh, the needs of, of the customers, even of those customers that, uh, sorry, even those needs that the customers still has not anticipated. The engineer is a planner. Uh, so I'm sure that if, uh, let's say, the 
whoever was designing, and I'm calling the engineer here, the, the, this, this, the designer of this environment, I'm sure if they came to me and, and asked me, uh, uh, Alex, what, what would be your request for this? I would never remember to tell them about the sequence of lights, right? Uh, but maybe if they asked me differently, and if they asked me, uh, let's go to a, to, a, to a classroom where you usually teach. What are the problems in this classroom? Then that would already start. Oh, then I would start remembering things, right? That would help them. So uh, an engineer should never anticipate that the, the customer will remember of all the problems uh, he or she has. But an engineer should have a plan to try and rescue those, and and also try and anticipate others other problems. For example, this had to be anticipated. Uh, this seemed to be. In fact, I think that these lights here were included here much after everything else because it seems the only thing that is not planned is not is not in the same uh, let's say it's, not it, it's 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 not in harmony with the the, the the rest of the design so this was put later for whatever reason and uh, again it's just anticipating a little you know a little understanding of of lights and <laughs> and well, anyway uh, let's let's see uh, let's have a look at this um, drawing uh, think of it as having as as if we had two axes there, a an uh, an, an, an x axis and a y axis, uh, right? They didn't draw that here, but think of, of the horizontal here as being what they call functional integration, okay? Uh, and the and the vertical one as being uh, the strategic uh, integration, strategic fit. Um, um, well. I, th there's a reason why they, they, they did not do this as a, a as as an axis a system. Uh, it really, at least for the x uh, axis, it doesn't matter which ones comes first. But let's see, we have four blocks that are represented there. The on the top there we have the business uh, strategy. The business strategy is if we th if we had to think about uh, ants, eagles, and monkeys, who would be concerned with the business strategy? Hmm? Eagles. The eagles. Okay, so this 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 is uh, the eagles here. Uh, down here we have uh, uh, well, well here, here we have the IT strategy. Who who thinks of the IT strategy? Monkeys. Uh, hopefully monkeys with uh, some wings as well. Uh, monkeys who can see. It, it, it could be uh, it, it could be eagles eagles with a, a, a good technology fit. Eagles that have some monkey monkey uh, abilities as well. Yes. Uh, all right. We need uh, basically uh, to to think of strategy. We have to see the long run. Uh, the, the long run, right? Uh, and and see the long run is the analogy with the, the eagle that sees at, at a long distance as well. Uh, those guys that are, are focused on the business strategy and, and the IT strategy, they're, they're not thinking what's happening today. They don't care about what's happening today, in the, for example, in a manufacturing plant. Right? It may have happened that the factory today, a, a machine is not working, a few workers uh, were not able to arrive because there is this strike, strike involving the petrol. The, you know, there's a petrol crisis in the country and they, 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 they couldn't come to work. These are all problems that may turn the let's say work today into a nightmare does that concern the strategist no the strategist is thinking the long run right uh, of course the what, whatever happens in a specific day or in a specific uh, um, moment interests the strategy when it's when when that is compared with what happened in all different days of the year or the, the, basically the, the the strategist is thinking is, is not concerned in 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 uh, stopping fires, right? They're thinking maybe of preventing future fires, but not stopping fires. So these guys here in, in, on the top are people that have the eagles view. Then we have here uh, another level, uh, which is uh, over here. They, they put the strategy here. They could have had, could have written the the operation or the, which is the the routine activities. They are developed uh, in well. Uh, uh, for the business and also for IT. Okay, so maybe these guys here, the, the leader of this uh, of this box to the right here, is probably a fat monkey, right? A big monkey or someone who uh, can run the and and the leader of this uh, business unit, this business units here are also people that are, are managers that are interested in running the the, the 
the daily, the routine activities of an organization, right? Uh, of course, the authors here uh, are, they included here, these boxes to, to the right here for IT. They could have had different boxes here, for example, for production, for finance, for marketing, for several other areas uh, or departments of an organization, right? They didn't include them. They, they, they put them all as if they were here part of the business simply because we want to focus on what happens with technology, okay? Uh, and then they, they say that we, we, we can have, uh, we, we can look at technology based on a, an internal view. Internal view is we, we're, we're concerned about what happens here. Let's say this is our organization. We're concerned about what happens here inside our, our organization or the external view that is the one that the egos are concerned with. And then my question is, why do the egos concern about what happens outside the organization? Because the commercial value will change. Because, because the commercial value of whatever the company does will change depending on what happens outside the organization. Right. Uh, we, we usually say that uh, when, when we are planning a strategy for, for, for an organization, we, well, one way of doing that is uh, using what is called SWOT analysis. Have you heard of that? Have you? Okay. Have you heard of SWOT analysis? Exactly. Strengths, opportunities, uh, strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, strengths and, and weaknesses are internally, uh, are internal, right? Uh, strengths and weaknesses are things that we as an organization have. Opportunities and threats is what is seen in the market. So. Do strategists only only look at uh, the exter uh, to, to the to the external to, to, to outside the organization? Not really. They have to focus. They have to look outside because um, that's where changes are happening. That if if these guys are not paying attention, they will will not perceive it. Changes that happen or, or, or the characteristics of your own organization, you know more intuitively, right? But of course that the strategists are also thinking about uh, what's happening internally to the organization because even to benefit from the opportunities that the market brings to us, uh, we need uh, to know our strengths. Uh, to, to avoid uh, some of the threats of the, the, the market, we should also be aware of our weaknesses. Right? Our strengths and weaknesses may help us uh, benefit from opportunities or uh, eventually have problems with the threats in the market, right? Well, this uh, uh, SWOT, for, for those who are not familiar with it, uh, just uh, if, if, you, if you just Google uh, SWOT, uh, uh, if you, you will see, uh, you know, many, many examples on the, on the web. What happened here? I didn't bring it to. I wanted this to be in the middle. That's her. Uh, let me see if I see an image here, which will probably. So, for example, here here is an example of uh, you know how, how it appears: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. If you if you have never heard of that, it's a simple, very simple way, not only of uh, of thinking strategy, but also communicating strategy with your team, with the people that you're working with, right? Uh, figuring out what you do right, what you do wrong, and figuring out what opportunities and, and, and threats there are in the market. So these guys here uh, have to, to think uh, of, of the strategy, the, the ones on the top, and these guys here, down here are the ones that execute the strategy. So over here we have on the top we have eagles, down here we have monkeys and ants, and of course, there, there may be some, some monkeys that inter interact more, more often with these guys on the top here. But it's basically, think of a, 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 the, the hierarchical pyramids of an organization and think of those, there are people that are taking the decisions and then there are people that are actually carrying out the work to make sure that those decisions uh, convert into the results that were expected. Right? Uh, they say here that, of course, there's a lot of interaction that all these arrows go in one direction or the, or the other here. Uh, I want you to look at this This as a square, and a square that can be made of several triangles here, because uh, I will show you the triangles next. For example, I can have 
uh, a stra uh, uh, and, 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 and basically we always there are situations in which we start with a strategy with a business strategy and then it gets that business strategy has to be converted into an IT strategy so something that starts here will then happen here okay and and then you will see in some of the drawings that will that I'll show next a triangle that goes like this uh, can you see my, it goes like this and this and sorry, and that back there so this let's say there is one possibility that doesn't pay much attention to what's happening down here there's another situation in which maybe uh, uh, things start with the uh, with an uh, with IT here uh, uh, an IT possibility to change the the business and then the business is executed so uh, I'll show you several triangles each one of them having one of the the corners of this square formed by the by this uh, for, for for smaller squares here uh, as as it's uh, it's 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 angle okay uh, and then we will see that there's at least in the this authors here think that we have at least four different ways of looking at the strategy uh, with respect to the way IT uh, re, uh, re, uh, relates to it for example the first strategy the first strategic the strategic perspective that you can have is one that starts with the egos here thinking the business and then uh, they communicate their strategy. They communicate what has to be done to the rest of the the, the organization. And uh, okay, the, the 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 organization and the IT here will perform to, let's say, to execute that strategy that was developed here. Notice that in this case here, what is missing? What we're missing IT here? There, there, there is no IT strat. IT is not at least IT is not involved strategically in this. Okay. Uh, Think again of uh, this. What we see here as this uh, ellipses now are the the squares that we had in the previous drawing, and we're missing. Let's say if 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 this is the, the kind of strategy that is being developed, we do not need a CIO, right? We need uh, a CEO, someone who's a CIO, CIO is the chief information officer. We don't we don't need someone who who thinks information technology strategically, right? We need someone who thinks the business strategically. And then a lot of operational people here who will make sure that this strategy works, including uh, some uh, monkeys and ants here in the, in the IT department that will also help execute the strategy. This is why they call it strategic execution alignment perspective, right? IT is there to support, to execute a strategy that was predefined without the involvement of the IT department. How good do you think that uh, uh, this kind of strategy could work in, in nowadays? It will fail. Pardon? It will fail. It will fail. Well, of course, you know, in, in business we are not that digital. You know, we don't say it's either zero or one. <laughs> so the, the right answer would probably say, well, it depends. And then you start writing 12 pages to explain why it depends, right? Well, you know why it depends? It depends. Are you in a very traditional business? Uh, and mainly, are you in a very traditional business that you do not see any reason why you should become more, uh, more, more, more technologically oriented. In fact, are you in a business that your customers value because it's traditional? They go there because they want to have an experience with you know how things were in the, in, in the past, for example. That's definitely a, a case where you want to be away from, from the CIO and his uh, crazy ideas of how to use technology to intrude a world of tradition, for example. Okay, so, but but I agree with you. In most cases, this is a a, 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 a it's possibly a chance for being left behind. You know, if you are not thinking the ways the new technologies are changing people's lives and therefore uh, people's minds and, and 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 therefore the way they deal with their pockets, right? What they buy, what they they don't want to, to buy any longer. If you're not thinking about how technology is, is affecting that or how you can use technology to affect that, you're probably um, being left behind. Someone is doing that. Okay? So we're not saying that this model doesn't work any longer. What we're saying is that this is actually how companies did work, and some of them until now. right? Some of them, those that are talking about digital transformation now, if someone is starting to talk about digital transformation now, it, it is possibly someone who was working based on this model for too long because business transformation uh, or digital transformation is something that Hank, Mr. Hancock, uh, Hancockerman and, 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 and Henderson here were talking about in 1993. They were, they were saying, okay, they, they showed this, but you see what else they showed here. Let's see a second 
second uh, corner of that that square and see. Pardon? Uh, yeah, you but you have to find this 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 uh, this relative of yours there and, and tell him that he's famous in your in your information systems class. I'll become like him one day. Yeah. Better than him. You know, it's, it's, it's very good that we, we have uh, high standards uh, because that means that uh, it's the, the only way you can get better than him is, is if you aim there. But if you, you, you know, this guy has, has done a lot in, 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 in helping us shape. In fact, we, we don't usually think um, how much uh, these uh, guys that theorized this back then and were already proposing this to, to organizations, how they affected us. But they did affect, you know. There, there were companies that when they were reading this, they were saying, oh, this is what I have to do now, in 1993. So the, there are companies that do not have to talk about digital transformation now because digital transformation is, is part of them of their being. That's, that's how they are, and they have been transforming. And it's not only just digital transformation. They, they have been transforming uh, as strategy required. They did not um, decide to wait until the world had changed around so much that they, they have to rush and, and, and try to to recover because they, they were left behind. Look at this other kind of, uh, oh, by the way, let, let me go just go back there because it's something, there's something important to highlight about what is here in this box. Notice that the, the driver here, the driver of this strategy uh, is the business strategy. What means the, what, what do we mean by the, the driver here? Well, everything starts here. You think of a strategy and then a, a strategy is, is a plan and is a plan of where you want to go and also a plan of how to get there. So. So you start with this plan and then you get into the execution. What is the role of uh, the top management? Top management being these guys here. They are the strategy formulators, right? They, they formulate the strategy. These other guys here are not involved, okay? What is the role of IS management? Well, depends, uh, you, you could say, huh? In this case, they're, uh, they're, they're implementers, right? They're, the, 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 these guys here, they have to be good monkeys in the way that they understand what the ego wants. Uh, they understand the, the, the vision, they understand the strategy, and then they, they're simply implementing it. But notice that they're implementing something that someone else has thought. And uh, uh, if we think of uh, uh, criteria to analyze how well the strategy performed, uh, this tends to be very um, uh, related to uh, a cost-benefit thing, you know, like uh, usually the, invo the involvement of IT in this kind of situations is to reduce cost, in most cases, right? Uh, uh, technology is part of the, of the strategy simply by uh, making sure that things happen. Uh, it's not changing what happens, it's only making sure that it happens at the, the lowest cost, at the maximum of, of efficiency. Right? So, uh, in fact, this was the, f the first use uh, that was made of, uh, of IT because uh, it's the most obvious, right? If you have a technology that can do things faster than humans, whenever I automate human uh, tasks, for example, I, 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 I become faster. But, uh, but in this case, it's, uh, well, this, let's say, this is not even the, the case in which uh, IT was the cause of a new strategy. So when, when IT is the cause of a new strategy, then it means that it has a huge impact. In this case, IT, basically what, what the strategists want is, please do not disturb me, right? If you, can, if you can help me, great. If you can't help me, at least do not push in a different direction. Okay. Now let's see the second. Uh, uh, so this is strat uh, strategy <coughs> execution alignment. So IT is there to execute the, the strategy that was proposed. The second here is the technology transformation alignment perspective. Uh, this technology, uh, technology transformation means that the, no, no, notice that we, we know, well, who is missing here? The other parts of the organization, right? Who is, who is more involved? Well, the, the business leaders, the IT leaders, notice IT leaders with a, a, a strategic view, right? With, uh, with, with the view of, of, of the ego and uh, the IT staff here. And uh, the technology transformation perspective is one in which the business notices that it can become more, even more th than the previous one, it, it can use technology to become more efficient. So uh, it will change the way, it it, it, it it will still do the same thing, right? But it will use technology to do it with more quality, faster, uh, cheaper and so on and so forth okay 
Why aren't these guys here involved? Because they do not matter for this. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically uh, 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 what will, they, they will be impacted, right? All the other areas will be impacted because when the business decides we are, for example, we are automating our plant or we are, we are, we are, we are implementing an ERP system. Are you familiar with ERP? ERP is the Enterprise uh, Resource Planning System. It's, it's a, a system that tries to integrate the different areas of an organization. So you understand that in this case, uh, IT is involved. It, it, this does not mean that these guys here, the guys down here are not affected. They, they may be affected. In fact, they are, many times they are very strongly affected. Yes. But they're not in this situation. No, they are, they're not affected in the transformation itself. But after the transformation happens, the way they work will be affected. And I, I do think that they have to be considered, you know, when, you, when you're planning this, even if you're planning, okay, this, is, this change will involve, it will require a lot of uh, manpower from the IT department, so these guys need to be available. Uh, but if it's going to affect other people, these people need at least to be, when we deal with change management, uh, close, uh, I think it's going to be on Friday, uh, we'll have to, no, we cannot forget these guys, simply because this is being planned by these guys here, right? But anyway, Notice that it's already a different situation, and you, why why does this require an IT leader here with a, an ego's perspective? Because well, it, yeah, maybe that the enterprise already used the IT before, so they can't enter a new thing without uh, uh, integration with the others. Yeah, th th that could be a, a situation, but 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 again, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not talking. Uh, what, what you're talking seems to be more that you definitely need these guys here to make sure that the new works with the, the old technically. But what is the importance they, of having these guys? The importance of these guys, uh, maybe the uh, the director of the technology or maybe the chief of technology. So they are the people who take the decision, and then the <coughs> approval of these people, then the staff of IT can do something. Yeah, precise. And these guys here, they are, well, first, these guys are guys that can talk directly to these guys here. Uh, the, the upper management cannot talk to these guys directly. It's not that they can't, you know, it's not like, a, 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 sorry, uh, okay, I, still, I still don't, uh, actually, that, that was Prabhu who sits there, right? Yes. Yeah. Prabhu was saying, that, like in India, we, 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 we have castes and, and, and they, they are separate or whatever. We're not saying that these guys are different castes, but they sort of are. You know, it's it's usually the director is the the, the, the CEO. They, they you know even if they, they have lunch at the same place as, as the others, they sit together, uh, uh, they talk to one another, while these guys here talk to one another. Okay, so uh, it's important if these guys are deciding something that depends a lot on technology. It's important that they have someone who sits with them at the table to have lunch. You know what I mean? It's uh, someone who can talk to them in their language, and this guy's uh, language here is business, in their language, about the possibilities of doing whatever they want with the technology. So one important thing that we have to start thinking here, and this happens even today, right? Even, these guys wrote this in 1993. It's going to be 30 years, right? Even today, and it's not very difficult for us to figure that out. You go to some companies, you notice very, by simply observing how things uh, happen there, you can notice if there is in the organization if this box exists or not. Do we have IT strategists in the organization or is IT only an ex execution uh, department? Right? There are many companies, even large companies, that have very good and efficient uh, uh, IT departments, but the IT departments are simply there as a support function. Right? They can, uh, what they can do, they can easily do this, right? They can easily do this. They, they will, basically, they are negotiating with the other uh, operational areas, and these areas come to them and say, well, look, I need uh, you to help me develop a system for the production line. And they, they will go there and do that. And then, but notice, it's not, nothing strategic here. Whatever they, these guys are doing is to make sure that these uh, other departments of the organization are able to perform their own tasks. So the, the let's say the conversation that ha happens here happens at operational level and IT is only used at operational level to support operational activities. This is why we, we, we claim this is only strategy execution. They're doing nothing more than that. When we come to this second model, notice that 
who is who is telling uh, these IT people here at, at, the, at the execution level what to do? It's not the other areas demanding service. It's the IT strategy saying, look, we are, we are changing. This is a way of, this is one of those digital transformation uh, situations. We are using technology to transform the way we do things here. Right? Uh, and then the, the IT, this IT execution people may say, well, we'll is, is, not, is this not going to, to affect the lives of those people? Yes, it will. Let's plan uh, what we want to do. Let's get them involved. But it, now it's different. It's you here telling them how their life is going to be and not the opposite. You know? So it's a different relationship already. Okay? Uh, but this is still only, uh, I would say, this is only the... Uh, one of the possibilities of digital transformation, to use technology to reshape, to reorganize how you do uh, your business. The business is still the same. Notice that the strategy still starts with business. Uh, and, and, and the business strategy is, is what requires changes in the, in, the, in the IT. Okay, So this is what they call digital uh, uh, technology transformation. They call it Technology. They could have talked, they could, if they, they were uh, visionaries and they knew how people would call this 20 something years later, they could have called this digital transformation alignment because that was precisely what they were proposing uh, transformation by means of digital technology transformation of the business. But this is still to do the same thing. I told you that we would uh, make a difference between the words uh, efficiency and effectiveness, right? Maybe it's uh, I was only going to do it uh, later on in the course, but maybe it's already time for us to start discussing that. This here promotes uh, efficiency. You, you have something to do that has been determined by the, the strategists of the organization, and you're going to do that more efficiently, which means you're going to set a process that is better than the process that you had before to do that thing. Being efficient is doing something right, doing it the, the best way you could do it. Right? Being effective is doing the right thing. Notice there's a huge difference between doing something right and doing the right thing. If you're doing right the wrong thing, you're being very efficient. Right? You're being very efficient because you're doing right. But you're doing right something that's, for example, if, if it's something related to the market, something that the, the customers don't want any longer. So you're, you're, you're being very productive, and that's going to be a pile of products in a basket for, uh, for sales because no one, no one wants. And then what was you know, uh, the exercise of a very productive, uh, efficient process could turn out to be very ineffective. Right? These definitions of uh, uh, efficiency as doing right and effectiveness doing the right thing uh, it's probably something that's, well, maybe nowadays you already find it in dictionaries. I can tell you that um, uh, until, again, Peter Drucker, the same guy that I mentioned before, uh, wrote about the difference between these two concepts, and he needed two different words to express different things. He says it's important that companies uh, do things right, and it's important that companies do the right thing. And then he said, how are we going to refer to that? And then he said, well, there are words that are used maybe sort of like synonyms, efficiency, effectiveness, but if we let, let's make a difference between those two terms. And so, to my at least to my my understanding, Peter Drucker was the guy who helped change the well, making a difference between those synonyms, right? Even if it's in, in the dictionary, it may still uh, appear as being the same thing. Uh, Peter Drucker and Drucker told us there are two different concepts. We need different words because we express our ideas with with words most of the times. Right? See how important the technology language or is. If we don't have the, if we don't have the vocabulary, we cannot even think different ideas. Right. So this this is why I, I told you uh, at the beginning of the class today that uh, speech was such an uh, and, and our e our languages are such an important tool uh, for us to to develop uh, ideas uh, and even to live. Um, so uh, th this this is a process that allows for more efficiency. Okay, uh, of course, we assume that the business strategy here has already been thought to be effective, right? So the the business people decided what is the right thing to do, and then 
the IT people will make sure that that is done the most efficient way. Okay. Now let's see a, a, a different perspective still. This is the competitive potential alignment strat uh, perspective. Look what happens here. The driver has changed. Ah, oh, by the way, let, let's. Sorry, I, I didn't emphasize uh, before. We, before we discuss this, let's go back to the previous drawing and see what happened here with in terms of who was responsible for what. Look, the driver here was still the business strategy, okay, as in the the, the previous one. So things started here and start here. The role of the top management technology visionaire. Look, wh why the, why are we saying that these top managers are visionaire? Simply because, well, they, they believe that if they, that, 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 that they are the ones who think that uh, and see that if they use a specific technology, they will have better business results. Notice that the flow is going from here to here and to here. So everything starts here. So the, the, these are the guys who have the, the idea and who are convinced from the beginning that they need technology. So they're technology enthusiasts, the technology visionaries. The role of IT management, what do these guys do? They are the technologies, uh, technology architects. They, they will understand the vision of the business people and, and do the design and, 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 and will do the project of making that that happens using the technology. And uh, 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 how will uh, the, the, uh, what, what is going to be the, 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 the criteria for assessment of the, the performance? They say here technology leadership in the sense that these guys here will be uh, in, in control of the whole process. Because these guys here, they, they gave the idea, they, they, are the, they, they have the vision, right? And then they tell, do it. And these guys are, are the ones who will have to do. And think this, this is challenging also, because these guys will have to, uh, to, to involve their team here in a change that will involve these guys that do not even appear here. So the leadership here is because these guys will have to communicate to these people the importance of the change. Uh, of course, they will, they will get the support of the 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 business uh, strategists also, but they, they will uh, uh, they will have to make it happen, right? And this is why they are they they, they will be assessed uh, with respect to their leadership in making sure that the technology change happens. Let's go to the third corner of the square, the competitive potential. Notice that here, the IT strategy sort of happens first, then the business strategy. This, this may seem a little weird because you're going to say there, there's no way that the, the IT strategy can happen uh, before the, the business strategy. After all, it's a business. A business only makes money if it sells its products. Technology is, is, there, is still there to help the company uh, obtain that. True. But what happens here is that these people, in, 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 it's the IT people with the Eagle's view. Right? They, they understand the market, they go to, they're aware of all technologies available in the market and, and then this guy goes there one day that he's sitting with the president of the company. Remember, this guy here sits at the table to, to have lunch with this guy. It's different to the guys that are down here, right? So he's sitting there and he's, he, he talks to the, 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 the CEO, you know, I think that there are some technologies available in, in, in the world now that may require that we change our business. That, that we do different things to, to what we did in the past. Notice, it's different things, not a different process to obtain the same product. It's actually changing our product. Okay, And then the, the CEO listens to that, and uh, if uh, it makes sense, it will say, yes, definitely. I mean, if we don't do that, someone else will. Uh, so, or, or that may be an opportunity for us. Sometimes it's not changing the whole business of a company, but sometimes it's for example, including a new, a new product or including a new, um, uh, a new idea or something, uh, and then, then if this guy agrees, and then they, they operate a, a change that involves the whole infrastructure of the the, the organization. Uh, so the driver who starts the thing, right? It's the the IT, uh, the, the, the IT people. Uh, the role of top management. Uh, well, the top, top management have to be, in this case, they have to be business visionary because the technology here is proposing a different business. Being business, uh, uh, being a, a business visionary mean, means looking at that business that is being proposed and thinking, yes, this makes sense, we will make money with that. 
that's that's a good thing for us to do. Let's do it. So they they have to have the the the, the vision, right? Uh, the role of IT management uh, is is here included as as a catalyst of uh, the change because the the business will change and the IT management is what will make this uh, will allow this change. But notice that it's not necessarily a whole change in the in the in 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 in, in the IT. The, uh, in the way the processes happen, this may even be a change in the in the way people think of the of the organization and and so and so on. Uh, I have one example that I think, uh, of course, the, the 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 paper presents its own examples. Uh, one drawback of these papers being uh, papers that were written uh, so many years back. Some of the companies that they they show here. Are companies that we are not even uh, aware of, or are not at least not in the spotlight any longer. For example, this Baxter Health Healthcare. Uh, have you ever heard of that? No. And, and again, uh, sometimes uh, students of mine they go they start researching what happened to to companies 30 years later, and they, they sometimes they say, "Well, this company went bankrupt last year, or whatever." Uh, so it doesn't even. What, what I want to say is that the fact that a, a company at some stage has uh, a great uh, um, example of you know, of strategy of, or use of IT for strategic purposes doesn't mean that they're going to be uh, um, you know good examples forever right the, 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 the world changes fast uh, and the companies sometimes even if they're very successful at one stage uh, later on they they relax and others go ahead and they they're left behind I'm not sure exactly what the situation is with Baxter healthcare these days, but what this company did was that the IT leadership told the business, "Look, we sell uh, drugs to, to hospitals, and uh, hospitals have to to reach us and and ask for for the medicine, the, the medicine, the, the drugs that they need, and then we have to send it to them. What if we and and this is things that Baxter was doing the the, the very early 90s." What if we include? What, what if we go to the, these hospitals that are good clients of ours and put one of our computers there, a terminal? In that case, maybe a, a microcomputer. I don't know exactly what the technology was, or at least I don't remember if uh, if they. I think they even mentioned here exactly. Uh, we, we include that there, and then uh, the you know the the person in the hospital who, who's in charge of that will include that there. This will appear to us electronically because we'll have a. At that stage, notice early in the 90s, not even the, the internet was uh, was already there, but not the way it is today. So, but anyway, that will appear in in the screen of someone at our company, and we will send directly to them much more efficiently. And so, notice that they changed the way they, they operated. Notice they changed their business, right? Not only the process, they actually turned they they became a, 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 an information company more than anything else, because now they if uh, they 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 had a much more convenient way of uh, of doing it, um, but an example uh, that's still very probably that you, you've already seen and, and that I like is uh, Nike Nike ID. They, uh, don't, I don't think that they, they call it Nike ID any longer. Nike ID was a personal personalized uh, Nike offer. Oh, here I, I, it just sends me straight to France, which is which may not be good. Uh, or maybe it is. Let me see if I wish for some reason. I don't know if I can avoid. I did not include the f France. Yeah, it, uh, this this may be. I don't know if they. Yeah, they. Maybe I, maybe I can just specify US here and see if because uh, I don't know their their website here, and I know that for example in Brazil they do not offer the customized. Oh, it keeps interesting. It keeps, uh, yeah. Well, it, you have to go to it. Hmm? Nike USA or Nike. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what I tried. I tried to. Yeah, or can we see here? Let me just see. Maybe they, they do have here in France. Uh, uh, no. It's, well, in the United States. Maybe we can break that. Well, while you're technical people, you can uh, find ways of using some, uh, sh pretending that you are in the US uh, for some reason. Uh, it's interesting because it doesn't do that in Brazil. Uh, 
of course, if I just try Nike in Brazil, it will show Nike in Brazil. But but it, I also have a, an easy way of uh, going to the to their US. But anyway, what what they do in their US uh, site, they have the possibility for you to customize a pair of tennis shoes. Have you heard of that? Customized tennis shoes. What you do is you well. They, they have a, a several platforms of shoes like you, first you choose the model and after you choose the model then you start choosing all the details of the shoes let's say you, you choose the color you sometimes you choose the fabric uh, well of, of course you choose the size but the size is something that we, we you, you, you choose uh, the if the lace is going to be in, in, a, in a specific color you even choose you know where it's usually embroidered uh, Nike you can choose to write your name there or something else all of that is possible uh, and and then um, and then of course when you pay with your credit cards, they will send it to your home. Uh, I don't know how long it takes, maybe a week or so, uh, because the, 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 the pair of tennis shoes has to be manufactured still, right? But they've not, they've they've realized, and uh, they've realized. I mean, they probably someone in the IT department said, look, there's an interesting uh, new business for us. We can sell tennis shoes. Uh, not as a product of the shelf, but as something that people uh, order from us. There are some, uh, of course, for, for the IT guy to, to, to see this as an advantage, he has to have, he or she has to have the view of the ego. Because what, what will it, why would this guy be interested in making personalized tennis shoes if that's probably more expensive? This guy could say, well, you know, I think that that's a good idea because uh, when I turn an off-the-shelf product into an ordered product, that means that the customer pays today and receives the product in the future. This is great for the, the cash flow of an organization, right? Many times, what, what mainly the retail, what they have to do is they first, the company has to put the money and then later on they get the money from the customer. Right? But this way, see, this, this, is a, this is talking business. This is talking, this is this guy here talking to these guys. Look, this is one great advantage. Do you think that someone from down here would be able to have this kind of conversation here? Well, first, they, these guys here would not sit on the table with this guy, right? Yeah, the, or, or this guy could talk to this guy, but the problem is that this guy would not think of that. In general you know this is why I say even if you are in a very technical uh, position understand a bit of what moves an organization what moves the organization is for example um, the money flow is important for, for any organization organizations do not like to have to pay the suppliers first convert uh, uh, raw materials into a product and then sending uh, this product to be in a shelf in the retail markets for I don't know three weeks a month or more than that uh, and risk not selling and then at the end having to sell it at a reduction a reduced price simply because uh, the market didn't want so if you can convert uh, the the sale of a, an off-the-shelf product into the, the sale of a, a product uh, uh, an ordered product you eliminate that problem of having to anticipate what the market will want you know the customer first decides what he or she wants Pays for it, and then and then you produce it, Alina. So maybe this situation is something like uh, if uh, the IT department, not department, but the IT people with a high management level, uh, they want to uh, to upgrade any system which uh, which needs money. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, so absolutely, they they need to talk with some people with CEO or. Uh, uh, the head of the business. Mm -hmm. So then, the, without their permission, so the the people with in, uh, in in management level in IT, they cannot uh, buy something without permission of the with the people who is working in strategies or maybe their CEO of a company. So they need to talk with them and. Uh, yeah, well, it's because those the the, the 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 strategic plan of the organization is made by the those business people, right? So they, uh, they, they have to be convinced. Yeah, they talk with them and them. So in here, the IT staffs uh, do not need to, because they are the people who is working on operation, but they are not 
they don't touch on the monies or something, uh, planning, historical planning. And, and because they don't, they don't, don't do that, they don't think about that either. So what, what my, my, it, it came back on its own. Good. So sometimes it's just a matter of waiting. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, but but what I'm claiming here is that it's notice that it's important that you have uh, uh, in the organization people that can uh, think of uh, of IT from this ego's perspective uh, to make sure that they. It's not a matter of convincing, but they, that they can talk these and, and these guys understand that that's a possibility. So uh, I was talking about uh, Nike IG or this Nike. Uh, one thing is that conversion of an off the shelf sale into an, a, an order sale with all the benefits of an order sale okay uh, of course there are uh, someone could also argue that an off-the-shelf product has its own uh, benefits sometimes uh, maybe if, if you have some very uh, how, how they say immediatist uh, customers that need to see and buy immediately right if that's the case it's important to have it off the shelf so that people buy out of the impulse of buying but for things that people uh, buy, uh, what they want to think uh, beforehand, maybe this is a, a possibility. But a, another reason for, for example, keeping to, to the Nike's example, another reason for, 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 for them to, to propose the, the, the development of this new way of, of this new product. And notice, why is this uh, IT uh, based? Because, of course, although it, it's going to change the whole way the organization is, is, uh, works here or will work, but it's, it's based on the fact that, that now it is possible to do it because the customer can easily get in contact with the organization through the internet, for example, and select, in fact, almost design uh, the product as the customer wants uh, uh, without, uh, and, and that's not expensive. Then the IT department can, can make sure that the, the product is manufactured that way still in a sort of a simple way because, uh, you know, that uh, tennis shoes are, I mean, they're produced in a, in a way that, uh, well, it, it depends on the level of automation, but but still, those decisions that the customer did, they are all they are all included in the database that will select which color of uh, of tissue is going to be used, which color of uh, the lace and and uh, what material and so on and, and so on, and and those materials are going to be there for the manufacturing um, process at the right time, at the right place, uh, uh, so so that things happen. Uh, the, the right way. Uh, what other advantage that we have here that is a business advantage, not not a, a technology advantage of allowing customers to design their own products? Can you see any other advantage? Yes, we can get more customers. Maybe maybe you get cust customers that uh, uh, that are interested in in this technology of yours as being something innovative. Of course, if everyone does, if if the competition also yeah, does it, then you lose. But being a special thing, maybe you get more customers. And yes. also, we can get more revenue here. Um, of course, when uh, it's the choice of the customer, uh, so they need to pay a little more money. May maybe uh, you, you will get a little uh, more revenue. Uh, it's it, it may be you may be able you increase the value. You may uh, you increase the value. You may increase the price. Yes. Again, we have to make a difference here. The value is how the customer perceives something. The price. We have value. We have three words here. Value. Uh, price and cost. So the value is the based on the perception of the customer. Cost is based on the production expenses, and the price is something that will be in the middle, right? Uh, and that will prov that will allow an exchange to happen. Exchange, someone ge uh, gets into that, that exchange offering money. Someone else offers the product, right? So the price the price has to be the cost has to be lower than the price, and the price has to be lower than the value, so that everyone is happy. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think that this is uh, uh, the, the value that they add by doing that is more than the costs than the, uh, that they add to their production. I don't think that it's like that because if it were like that, we would probably only have tennis shoes sold as customized items. So, or maybe that's only for some people, other people don't mind having exactly the same shoes of other people. But anyway, uh, of course, I'm not from that field. Uh, I'm not a marketing person. I'm not, and, and I'm not a marketing person at Nike to tell us why they have not gone much further with this. They, they, they do have uh, this. This has been going on since 2005, I think. So they have been doing customized shoes for ages. Uh, 
it has not grown to be their their big business, their, their you know their main products. I don't think that they intend to to turn that into their main product because I, I'm not sure if there is this advantage there. You know, I mean, if they had to to charge uh, uh, all the the additional costs that they have to produce a customized tennis shoes, if they had to add those to the the price to to the cost of the sorry to the price of the product that they sold before, maybe many customers would not find value there. So it is a little more expensive, but it's not much more expensive. But I think that there is another advantage that they see there and that maybe these guys can communicate here. They, they think that that's a great way of doing some customer research. Mm -hmm. Customer research is, I don't know if you've ever been stopped on the street here by, by someone with a, you know, with a folder here uh, doing an interview for, for a shop or for a, a brand asking you about a lot of things that will help them improve their products, right? We can think of any customized product being sold through the internet as a customer uh, research form. Because you're actually, you know, if you say, do you prefer the lace of these tennis shoes to be white, red, green, black? When you click in one of those bo buttons, you're showing your preference. And of course, you've, you've all studied st statistics at some stage in life, you know that we are we all want to be treated as individuals. We all want to be uh, to to have our own um, ideas and on our own interests respected. But we are all very similar. So at the end, uh, when let's say 30 people, 30 is a magic number for for statistics for whatever reason, right? Those T student uh, statistics they all use. When when 30 people have already uh, been surveyed you can already start making guesses about the next 30,000 people or 30 million people. Right? Of course, there's always th that thing of deciding if the sample is representative of the population and all those blah, blah, blah that we, we, we listen in statistics. But the fact is, selling uh, a little portion of uh, the company's products by means of this uh, 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 model, they can fine tune the way they produce the, their other products. They they can decide on the trends for the market and so on and so forth. See, this is, I, I bet that this is more valuable than any of the other reasons. Because, uh, I mean, companies are, uh, they, they definitely want to know what we're thinking so that they, they can provide us with products that are more appealing to us than the products their competitors are offering. Okay? Uh, but notice that this conversation here is the guy in IT is saying, look, there is technology that allows for a different business. Notice it's a different business. Sometimes the, the, the different new business kills the old business, kills in the sense that it will replace. I haven't seen that happen very often. I have to admit, most companies are very reluctant into changing completely their, their products. But many companies do things like that. They, they try a different uh, products, they, they innovate somehow, and sometimes when they, they notice that this new product is actually a much better proposition, they, they, they change, okay? Uh, so notice that here, so the, the driver is the, the strategy, yeah, we, we've already seen this, the driver is the, the IT strategy, so things start with, with, this, uh, with an IT strategist saying, look, there are, there is new business that can be performed with the technology that we we either already have available or that we can obtain. My question here, going back to Nicholas Carr's idea, does this uh, technology that will, uh, will guide a new business here, does it have to be proprietary technology or could it be infrastructure technology? Infrastructure. It could be infrastructure. Yeah, because you don't need to many things to like I mean, or to like, or make customers select things. It's, it has been done before, so you don't need to like create the wheels again. Right. You're saying that what, in this case, what uh, if we're thinking about Nike, what Nike is doing? Yeah, you you, you can uh, get tools that are already available in the markets. Of course, there there may be some uh, specific developments to make things look like uh, like me. Nike, right? But but you don't have to reinvent anything or develop. You don't need. Uh, you know, new technology being developed specifically for that. Maybe Nike would even wish that because that would be a guarantee that no one would copy them. But notice, I haven't seen uh, other, I haven't seen, well, I haven't looked also, but, uh, but I haven't seen other tennis shoes companies 
uh, trying to mimic what Nike does, right? Because this is this is interesting to Nike. They they found that uh, it would be uh, interesting to sell customized shoes, possibly with that intent of understanding their customers better and improving the the the, the quality and uh, whatever they offer, even to the standard, to their standard lines. This is something that they were convinced about. Other uh, maybe in another company. The CEO would have to be convinced of the same thing, right? Um, so in this case, uh, it was uh, they did not need uh, necessarily some, at least some absolutely new technology to do that. But in, in some cases, uh, it may be it, it may be required. I, I agree that there are many situations in which there is technology that is available is available to the market, but that fits uh, fits so well. The, the business proposition of a company that uh, the, even the competitors are never going to be able to, to copy it because it doesn't fit their own uh, way of doing things. There, there's a paper that we'll, we'll see uh, on Wednesday uh, that is an interview with Michael Dell. Michael Dell, you know, the, 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 was uh, Dell, the, Dell, 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 yeah, Dell Computer. Uh, uh, he started this company in, in 1985. Uh, in '95, it was already the maybe not, uh, not yeah '95 '96. It was already the largest computer, not computer manufacturer, but computer computer seller in the world. He used to do configuration according to the need. Yeah, he uh, he uh, exactly he he thought of uh, of Dell as an assembler, not as a, a manufacturer. So he used to buy from IBM. He used to buy from whoever. Whoever had a good product, good product yeah. uh, and, and that would fit the needs of a customer who, who was buying through their system, yes. they would sell. Of course, they would say, IBM, I buy it from you, but it will have to have my brand. Okay, but well, we'll have my logo there. The majority of Dell customer support mm -hmm. is in Asian countries. Yeah. Where they can pay employees a little, little amount of salary. That's how they used to save much money and invest in R&D. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Dell, the, 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 the what provided Dell with a, a competitive edge in the market was the use of a very strategic technology for them, which was the internet that is available to everyone, right? So one could say, well, if they're using infrastructure technology, couldn't uh, uh, IBM or HP simply go there and see, see the way uh, Dell was being so successful? Couldn't they go there and do exactly the same? They couldn't. They, could, they simply couldn't start using the internet to sell computers the same way as Dell was selling. I'm talking now about the end of uh, the, the 20th century, so 1999, I think 1998 was when Michael Dell gave this interview. At that stage, IBM, Comp at that stage, Compaq was still alive. Compaq was sold to HP later on. Uh, Comp uh, IBM, Compaq, and, 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 and HP, they were all looking at uh, Dell and saying, it's great what they're doing, but we cannot copy them. You know why they couldn't copy them? It, 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 huh? it was, you know, I'm, I'm saying that everyone noticed that Dell was doing something very right, right? Because they became, they were a startup and 10 years later, they were the largest uh, computer company in the world. They were do, definitely doing something right. And other companies that were much bigger than, than Dell looked at Dell, said, yeah, what they're doing is great, but I cannot do it. Why couldn't IBM or, or, or Compaq uh, or HP, why couldn't they simply uh, admit that Dell had a bit, uh, better strategy and copy their strategy? Any ideas? It's not the, the, the way of doing business for them. Yeah, but okay, but you, but no, no, you know, no business person says that's not my way of doing business. I prefer to keep throwing money in the garbage bin because that's my way of. You know. <coughs> Pardon? Oh, okay, but again, his strategy was based on using the internet and a web page in which people said, "I want a computer this way and that way, a customized computer." But why couldn't the others do that? I mean. I'm sure that they could go to India or to Brazil and hire a bunch of uh, students there and say, develop a, a website there that I can sell the same way that Dell is selling. It was not, again, the technology was not the big issue there. Real business. 
yeah, it, it was the way they were doing their business that was structured in, uh, and, and, and cast in a, in a way that they couldn't change. Uh, those companies used to sell their computers through retail stores. And notice, uh, something that you sell in a retail uh, store needs to be ready to be on the shelf. If, it needs, if it's ready to be on the shelf, it means that all the boards have to already be in the computer before it's on the shelf, right? And what was Dell proposing? Don't buy a computer from the shelf. Order it from me. You have. Send it to you. Same. Sorry. <coughs> oh. You will have the same advantage that uh, that uh, uh, the customers of Nike are having. That well, Nike was later, right? In fact, Nike mimicked Dell's idea. I, I, I would say that Nike probably got inspired by Dell. Yeah. Was, uh, that's basically what uh, startups are doing. Now. And, and uh, startups are all the time they're they're checking what are companies doing that is crazy, right? What what. What, whenever they find uh, something that companies are doing that seems crazy to them, they say, I have a different way of doing that. Yeah. And, and of course, they can do that because a startup has nothing to lose, yeah. right? You're starting from scratch. But a company that has already organized itself in a specific way, that has agreements with uh, suppliers and customers and, uh, and, 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 and intermediate middlemen and so on and so forth, they're not so free to decide their lives. Right? Um, so th this is all to say that sometimes what this guy has to do is uh, has nothing to do with new technology. It's simply that it's technology that is not being used for the business, but if used for the business, will uh, provide uh, a better competitive potential. Okay. Uh, and the last, oh sorry, and the last uh, corner of our, our rectangle is this one. This is a more boring one. Is it locked out? <laughs> um, this is a more boring perspective. It's, it's called the service, uh, service level alignment. It's boring because it doesn't involve the, the upper management. Right? Uh, or Notice there is still a role for top management here, which is prioritizer. So it's not that they're not there, but as soon as the the, the, the top management uh, says yes, you can do that, you can do it. But but I don't want to know the details because notice the the, the thing is service level. When, uh, service level it means that IT is proposing uh, ways in which it will improve the the improve the processes. Uh, but not necessarily generate new businesses, not necessarily make the customers happier. There may be, uh, uh, of course, if, if, if you don't think that there is benefit there, you don't approve. But the, the top management is not interested in this. Right? It says that, that's the technical stuff. If, if you think that that's uh, the right way of uh, going, go ahead, report next in, in, our, uh, in, our, in, a, in, 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 in an annual meeting next year. Right? Uh, this is not the kind of uh, project or change or strategy in which the top management is going to be involved all the time or even concerned about. Okay, uh, The role of management here is executive, executive leadership, which means that they are going to make sure that this happens. And uh, and basically what the, cri the criteria to, to assess it at the end is, well, did this make the customers happier, right? If so, all right, we didn't get more money, but having uh, customers happier is already something. Right, four perspectives that were presented about ways of doing strategy. Uh, all of them happen in any organization, depending on you know, uh, depending on the situation, we, uh, depending on the external environment. Remember, that's why it's in that box. I mean, depends uh, depending on what is happening in the, the external environment, depending on how the internal or internal char characteristics are. All of those things uh, end up. Uh, uh, interfering with which strategy we'll be developing at each time. But at least we're not stuck with that, that only perspective that companies had in the, the 90s. That was this one. Right? Companies thought that this was all that they could do with uh, technology. Simply support the business. These guys told us that that was not the case in 1993, in 2022. 
we still have this problem, right? There's still companies. Again, uh, COVID helped pushing some of the, the companies that were still lagging behind, but there is, I would say that there is a lot of sectors, a lot of companies that lag behind this, that I still use technology only as a support um, uh, uh, so support to do their regular business uh, while they're, they're, we, we should have a much stronger involvement of but notice that of course to, to have a stronger strategic involvement we do need to have leadership here so whenever you go in, into an internship uh, try to see how the what kind of leadership you have in the IT area is it a leadership that is that sits at the table with the CEO to have lunch. Observe that it's not very difficult. I mean, many times we are there in the, the, the in the plants, right? Everyone is having lunch at the same place. Who does the president of the company have lunch with? Many times it's with the finance uh, director, the marketing director. Is there any IT person around? If not, is that good or is it is that bad? I have a, a, a story to tell uh, you about, which is probably not true, but anyway, it's, it's a good example of this uh, company that manufactured shoes, and then the the owner of the company sends two people to check in distant lands if there were markets for their for their product. Right? For some reason, they they got mixed up, and the the two the, those two people that went there to investigate the possibility of selling shoes to this other land, to this other, to this other country, they ended up being sent to the same country. Uh, and they both came with different reports. One of them said, there's no business for us there. Nobody wears shoes. And the other came and said, we have to double our manufacturing plants. We have to start advertising there because no one wears shoes. Right? So it, it all depends on your perspective. Uh, I would say that for if you're in an internship, right, it's your first job, uh, I would prefer to go to a firm where there is some good leadership at the strategic level, right, because that means that, that IT is going to be taken more seriously as part of the strategy and not only as a support, right. But even that, then, you know, sometimes you're, you're to, they just needed you to be there, right, because sometimes they just needed an intern to come and uh, see things and find a chance of having lunch next to the president of the other organization, have a talk with him and uh, get him interested in the fact that there may be a potential of selling shoes in a country where nobody wears shoes. Right? So there, there, there may be uh, good business to be done, uh, uh, even if uh, involving IT, even if IT has never been included in that decision making in the past. It's, it's just so there is maybe there's the possibility that you will uh, uh, let's say, very quickly raise in the hierarchical, hierarchical pyramid of the company, but there is also uh, a good chance that uh, that, that company, sim company simply doesn't care for that and doesn't have the vision for that. So maybe you need the next generation, you know, it's, it will have to be the son of today's owner of the company that will be able to do the change because the father uh, keeps uh, thinks that well the, the way he's done the business has worked so far it will work until he dies okay right okay so the the papers I I spared for this afternoon is again is that your uncle again yeah. your uncle again seen 94 uh, one year after the other right that, that that first paper was written in 93 originally now we have the 1994 paper, IT enabled business transformation. Notice the terms that we used back then were not digital transformation, but what is it, IT enabled business transformation? What is the difference between that and, and digital transformation? So don't get caught by the buzzwords of the, of the week or the year or even the decade, right? Uh, this has been around. Uh, and look at what these guys propose here. I, again, as I told you, I like uh, Mr. Van Katterman here because there's always a drawing that reflects uh, the content of the whole paper. And, and this guy here talks about two kinds of, um, of um, how call it, business transformation that, that, that can happen in organizations. Uh, one that happens at an evolutionary level and one that happens at a revolutionary level. Today my tongue is, is sort of revolutionary level. 
What is easier to do, you think? Yeah. Evolution or revolution? Evolution. 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 One step after the other, right? The evolution is easier. Well, this in this case, uh, they did have a, a an axis here for the range of potential benefits. The more you are to the right, the more benefits. Uh, and uh, here, the degree in the the in the x y the y axis, the degree of uh, business transformation that is obtained. Uh, low. And notice that the, the evolutionary levels they they have a lower potential uh, benefit associated to them, which is reasonable. Okay, they're doing things little by little, so the 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 benefit is is not that large, and uh, they also cause little transfer uh, transformation of the business itself. And then when we look at the, the top here, you will see that among the revolutionary levels, uh, uh, there is this business scope redefinition that had radically, uh, had radically transformed the business and also has great potential uh, benefits. Let's try and understand each one of, of uh, these. Uh, usually engineers, in, in, uh, or when, we are, when we're studying in hard science departments, we're stuck at this level. We're, we're, and we are very good at doing local exploitation. What is local exploitation? We go to, let's say, we as the people who, who can solve a technical problem, go there, talk to the person who needs our help, understand their problem, understand what they do, understand the way technology can solve their problem. We go there, provide them with a solution. We check, plan, do, check, and act, right? We check if they, if they are happy. If they're happy, we go away, and everyone is happy, right? We affected the life uh, of one person. Sometimes we affect the life of one department. But as we were dealing straight with them, doing exactly what they wanted, uh, the only way we can have them unhappy is if we are not competent to do what we we promised, right? But I mean, we are we are an order taker in a way that we are, we, we go there and we understand what they need and we deliver what they need. No problem. No problem. No. Little benefit in the sense, little potential benefit, little transformation, because this transformation is usually only uh, at the level of uh, increasing efficiency. Right? The problem starts happening already in the next level, what they call internal integration. Internal integration is, is internal integration to the organization. So at this level, we, we have already a lot of uh, people developing some local exploitations as, as it as it was a local exploitation it was not it only had the view of the ant or the monkey never the view of the the eagle no one was thinking when you're doing local exploitation you're not thinking about how that will that system will talk to other systems later on in life right we're solving that problem and creating two new problems or several new problems many companies when they start uh, doing their path to a, a digital, a more digital life, they start with, obviously, with the local exploitation of a few of its departments or a few of its tasks. And soon they realize that when they want to have those systems integrated to work as one, uh, that's sometimes even impossible. One was developed in one technology, the other was developed in a different technology. The database do not talk to each other or match. Uh, they, 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 there may be even different suppliers, um, all sorts of problems, right? And, and, and that's exactly when we start dealing with the, that, that's when we say, well, okay, now that I have already uh, um, automated or, or included com uh, computers in, in solving local problems, let me try to make sure that they integrate to one another. This is, is challenging. Uh, and it's challenging because if you have the, let's say, the marketing department that has already done a lot of local initiatives and uh, and is using one let's say one provider to 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 solve its problem and then you have uh, the production the operations departments doing something else when you want to join them someone will have to give up what they were doing and start doing something more similar to, to the other group right then we start that tug of war of who is stronger who, who can push their system to the other departments who has who will throw away its efforts and so it, it's tricky it's not see uh, as we as we, we start doing local when we get here it's there will be a lot of rework 
nobody wants the rework to be done in their own department. They hope that the other department will do the rework and that they, they can keep what they had. But of course, we will have to try and please uh, everyone. Ch very challenging. Uh, again, <coughs> ERPs, the Enterprise Resource Planning Systems, are usually included at this level, right? And uh, it's still evolutionary because you, you do not implement uh, an ERP to change anything, uh, to change anything that the customer can under, can see. Uh, you know, you're only changing inside the organization. So it's, you're only uh, uh, replacing your, your processes to processes that are pretty much alike, but that they are already uh, supported by, by some technology. Okay. Uh, but it's still... Uh, Evolutionary, the, the, the level of potential is, is a little higher, the business transformation is higher, and I think whenever we have business transformation, we also have uh, the risk involved in, with the business transformation, okay? But still evolutionary because you're still, you haven't changed the thing in the business, right? Uh, both uh, the localized exploitation and the internal integration could be developed by, by, uh, by uh, departments um, uh, information departments that uh, have just a more, let's say, executive, more more operational uh, leadership. You don't need you don't need that kind of leadership that appeared in the other paper uh, at a, a, a higher strategic level because uh, there's no strategic change being made here or proposed here. And then we start with the revolutionary uh, levels of business transformation. The first one is you think, well, our technology allows for business process redesigning. Uh, the, the business process that, that we had before is not doesn't make sense any longer. Uh, there's a possibility of doing uh, different things. In fact, all of these revolutionary levels are challenging what we did in the past and saying we have to do different things because the new available technology allows for different things because the customers will require different things and so on and so forth uh, as uh, we, we, we progress uh, with this. Uh, if we think about this, the, the business process redesign or reconceive, rethink the way our uh, company works, in which way would it would relate to the previous model that we saw in, in the other Benka Truman and Henderson's uh, paper? Remember the, those three, uh, the, those four triangles. Which triangle would be represented by by the business? Let's start by uh, IT strategies, then go to IT. Uh, I don't know the name actually. Go, go back. Do, do you have it there? Just, just. Uh, I can include it here again. Let, let me just pull our paper back here. It's, it's like start with the, in the IT strategy, then go to the IT. Uh, yeah, but, uh, it's, it would be the execution, but let, let, let's, let me include it here. It would be easier for you to say. You think it is not that one, definitely. No. It could be this one, or it could be this one. Okay. Which one? The competitive potential, or? the technology transformation. Uh, actually, I was talking about the other one still. Yeah, because we, are, uh, we said that... Uh, um, yeah, I hadn't thought of it, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It could be, because among these, I would say uh, uh, it, it could be, maybe it could be this one, right? Right. It could not be this one because we're still not transforming the business, yeah. right? But indeed, it could be, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, agree with you. Yeah, this. Uh, so no, again, remember, there's no zero or one, but but in both in both these cases, we do need a leadership that sees uh, things, starts seeing the things as uh, an ego. Whatever happens from this line up, right? So the business process, uh, process re redesign is already re it re requires the view of the ego. So uh, and and it is uh, sorry. So the, the business process redesign uh, could be uh, the redesign is uh, could could be this. I, I agree that this is even uh, better because we're still thinking about something. We'll redesign the process, 
But it will not necessarily, the, the customer is not going to notice that. But it, it is, but it already shakes the organization, you know, differently to what happens uh, here and here, that we're simply doing what we did in the past in a more computerized way. Here we're challenging what we did in the past and we're changing that. All right, good, good this inside of yours because it now allows me to think of a different one for this one, business, the business network redesign. What, what, what is the difference between the, the business process redesign and the business network redesign? The business process, I'm talking about what I do inside the, the organization itself. The business network involves the way I decide what I do internally in the organization and what I will ask a partner, a supplier, to do, for example. Okay, the network is a... Uh, companies working as a network is something that has been allowed by our technologies of today. In the past, companies prefer to do everything inside the organization. I remember have, having read, for example, uh, Kodak's, Kodak, the photo, photo company, uh, they, are, they had their, in their mission and their vision, they used to say, and they were very proud of it, that using the four elements from the Greek, water, uh, water, dust, uh, w uh, wind, no, water, water, earth, uh, fire, fire, fire and, and wind, wind, and wind, right? Yeah, so those, uh, from those, they, they, they claim that from those four elements, they built all their products, which means that they didn't want to have suppliers, you know, I mean, the supplier was nature, but they would convert nature into uh, their products. That's, that's how vertically integrated they were. Everything was done inside, right? Uh, technology has allowed us to split the business of what used to be the business of a, one organization into several or thousands of organizations, each one doing a smaller part of the, the whole, still with someone coordinating the, you know, the, the, the whole business proposition, but with different uh, people involved. So the business network redesign, where would it be? It's definitely not this one. Could it be this one? Or competitive potential, it means that I believe that I'm going to have an advantage out of that and usually proposing increasing value. Or this one here. Yeah, I think it's more like this one, right? Uh, the the business the, the 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 business strategists start thinking: Why should I do whatever thing inside if there is someone across the street that does that better than I do? In the 1960s, Volkswagen, uh, the German car manufacturer, they had their largest plant at that stage. I think was in Brazil, uh, and. Uh, and they also had the largest bakery in the country, inside their manufacturing plant, that, that made bread simply to feed the people that worked for them. That's following Kodak's mission, right? Saying, well, if, if, if our workers are hungry, we will feed them with the bread that we make. There are still, still today, there, there, there are people that think, well, probably they're thinking, well, if someone is going to profit on making bread, why? Why, is, why, why not us, right? But that's not the case because when Volkswagen needs to uh, use some of the space it has to have a bakery, for example, that's space that it could possibly better use doing what Volkswagen is known for, that is building cars. This is the mindset of today, right? We think we do what we are uh, and specialist in and we, we, and we outsource to others things that we are either not as good as they are or maybe things that we think that if we have to focus on that, that will distract us from things that are important to us. Okay, but this is the mindset of today. And we have this mindset because nowadays it's easy to coordinate uh, our activities to other partners' activities using technology. Uh, maybe back then in the 60s, again, when I, uh, when, I, when I read that, I think this is, who would be the dumb, uh, uh, executive or, or decision maker who would think that a car manufacturer should have a bakery inside simply because simply because it's cheaper to it, it wasn't that the reason the reason was that it was too difficult to coordinate with another company that was across the street or you know it, it required coordination 
they, they didn't have uh, WhatsApp. Of course, they had a telephone. They could, but it's still the, the the thing is, it was not so easy to put the systems to work one with the other, and they simply decided to work that way. Okay, and finally, uh, uh, so so redesigning the 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 network is even more complex than than redesigning the processes because many times you redesign the pro process, but the people were still there, right? It's it's the same people, or at least part of the people will still be there. Maybe maybe when you redesign the process, uh, uh, some people will need to be reallocated. Some people may even uh, be uh, uh, dismissed, but a lot of people are still involved. When you think about ne network uh, network redesign, that means a whole department being dismissed, for example, and the company decided we don't need to do that any longer inside. We have to. Well, th th this is easier or cheaper to do with someone else or better or whatever. So notice that each time that we, the, the more we involve people's lives, the more complex the decision becomes, right? Uh, uh, of course, no company likes to fire its employees. Many comp companies do that. Uh, some, some do that in a more responsible way than others. Uh, but in general, companies don't like to, to fire their, their workers, right? Uh, they do that when they're in crisis, but they know that that has a negative effect even on those who stay in the company. Because uh, whenever your colleague is fired, you think it could have been me. And, and you think, gee, that guy worked so hard for so long, isn't this company uh, committed to, I mean, he, was, he or she was so committed to the company, isn't the company committed to this person simply? Uh, so companies don't like to, to, to fire people, and this is why these revolutionary levels are each time more difficult to happen, mm -hmm. but many times they are, they are the, the, let's say, they are the way to go if you want to to keep uh, competitive in the market. Uh, and finally, the business scope redefinition. The business scope redefinition. This is an arguably one. this one here. This one. Yeah. So it's not uh, uh, surprising that we find some relationship between the two, ar uh, two articles. They were written by at least one of the authors was the same. But, his, but we, we, we can notice here that we can, uh, depending on our strategy, if the strategy is more at an evolutionary level, uh, here we're probably, and here it would probably be the fourth square, that we, uh, fourth triangle, the one that we, that, the first one here, right? Something like this. Okay, uh, the strategy execution would probably be more like the localized exploitation. This, this here would probably relate more to that. Uh, but this day, uh, here they show that there is different ways we, we, in which we can strategize. One thing that I didn't call your attention when we were reading the other paper by Vinka Truman and Henderson uh, is if we look at the, the role of IT management. This in this model here, strategy, strategy execution. The, 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 the IT manager needs to be the strategy implement, implementer, right? Then I go to, to this, the, the, the other second model here, uh, technology transformation. Uh, the idea is the, that the IT manager becomes the technology architect. Then we go to the third model, uh, the, role, uh, the competitive potential alignment. Uh, the, the role of management, of IT management, is to be the catalyst of the, of the change. And finally, in the service level alignment, the IT management needs to perform the role of an executive leadership. Different roles, very different roles. My question to you, are those the same person? Remember, I told you that many times companies have, the strategy is not against zero or one. Uh, we, we may have more than, of course, we have a strategic plan, but that strategic plan may involve several different projects. Uh, so. Some of those things may be happening at the same time. For some of them, you need a technology architect. For, for others, you need a catalyst. For others, you need uh, uh, someone who's uh, just uh, the, the implementator. Uh, the implementer. Uh, are, are, can you be these superheroes that can perform all those tasks? This is why being the, C, the CIO or, or, or is a difficult task. Uh, in, in, in different moments, you may be required to have uh, tasks uh, or abilities or competencies that are not necessarily those for which you are better suited. So uh, I would say that uh, you also need to have a bit of luck 
to be at the right place at the right time with your skills. But you have to be uh, humble enough to understand that in different moments, different skills will be necessary. And maybe you have to step back, or which is not easy to do. You know, Organizations are about people, and people step forwards, but hardly step, and step back. So uh, it's difficult for people to, for, for you to, to hear someone saying, I'm, I'm sorry, boss, uh, I'm not competent enough to do this, so I want someone to take my place here. And uh, so, yeah, of course, we, 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 we work for a salary, we, we need to raise our families or whatever. We need to, we feel that we need to be strong all the time. So I'm, I'm saying organizations are not necessarily a place where you will have the best person for the best activity or best job at the, at the right position all the time because you're humans. Uh, it would be better if, if organizations in which you have more trust among people, in those organizations there, there may be more room for people admitting their, their let's say, their weaknesses uh, and at the same time for others to also admit theirs and so that they perform as a team, uh, a better team uh, than, than in others. But it depends on the culture of the organization. Many organizations do not give much room for people to be absolutely sincere, but it's a challenge. Okay. Uh, I have seldom seen, I, I don't have many examples to give you. I, I have examples of, this is very easy, examples of local exploitation. Uh, and, and if you have done or whenever you do any internship, uh, you will be probably involved in some, something that is local at some stage. Uh, this is easy to give examples of. Uh, internal integration, uh, well, the, the all the implementation of, uh, of ERPs and, and systems that try to integrate organizations are examples of that. I see, I find it difficult to, to get good examples of companies that have gone through these three steps here. Mainly the business scope redefinition, which actually means changing your business because of, of technology. Right? Yeah. And, and the reason why I find it difficult to give you examples is because many companies prefer to die than to change, right? Uh, Kodak, for example, is an example. Huh? Blackberry. Blackberry. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not that familiar with, with uh, the decisions that Blackberry took over time. Nokia. Nokia. But Nokia, for sure. Yeah. It's usually what happens to these companies is that they they are tricked by their own success. But Nokia failed with smartphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they have other business there. Yeah. Uh, uh, but 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 the, 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 but think notice that the, the the market changed fast. They were there. They could have kept the, the, the change. They didn't because of uh, I would Previous say that. They, pardon? Previous sources. Yeah, yeah and and, and, and okay, their own strat their own their own trajectory their own track. Companies that have a successful track, it's almost like I don't know if in your countries people used to have horses with uh, those. Uh, they put put some some eye uh, blinds here in horses so that they did not sca get scared with with things that they could see to the side that the horse would only see to the front. It's almost like if companies wore those uh, blind uh, blinders here. Yeah. According to you, uh, I know iPhone is, is the best. Thing. According to you, how how do you know that? Who told you that? Yeah. Who said? Yeah. You you you've been taught you, you you've been you've been led marketing marketing convinced you that. If it's a hype, uh, according to you, uh, it's my opinion only. But yeah, for sure. I mean, wh why why do people pay more yeah, for a technology that is uh, weaker than some of the competition that you? Uh, some I've seen majority of people here they buy on EMI spring for two years, mm -hmm. and like man, serious? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Class for everyone. But but <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it's you know people humans. This is this is an important thing for us to realize as people in the hard sciences. What moves the world is not rationality, mm -hmm. right? So, our, and, and not even you, you think that you take the rational decisions, we don't. There is some portion of our decisions that is rational, and possibly that is the most irrational part of our rational decisions. The, to decide thinking that you're deciding only based on, on uh, when you really believe that you're rational, then I say, well, you, you're good to be replaced by a robot, right? Because a robot will, will still be more rational than you. Yeah, go. Like in the in the in the super world, as in in the mall, mm -hmm. most of our thinking are being done for us inside 
how they arrange yeah the clothing mm-hmm. the lighting mm-hmm. how they arrange you have to like oh so um, i forgot it is it ikea yeah the way they set yeah uh, this thing to, uh, to to make sure that you walk the way they wish yeah then so you will be able to like spend more, more. Mm-hmm. and even the pricing if you see nine uh, one nine nine yeah. you still be saying it's nine yeah it's, it's, it's one, one. Yeah. But it's, it's two <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so think uh, people are playing with our rationality you know you're you're, tr- you're trying to be rational and, and 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 they're playing with our rationality with all, with all those uh, situations so uh, but but that ought to say that it's it's difficult uh, so I find that these revolutionary levels usually happen in again in startups right someone sees okay companies are struggling to do what is obvious they, all these things need to be done but the companies that are there in a, in, a, in a specific market, they insist in their old way of doing things. And then someone who has nothing to lose, and, and many times has gained a lot because they just go to the Silicon Valley, you know, do a pitch, do a five minute pitch, I'm, I'm being very ironic here, but uh, get $20 million funding and start a new business that is going to be successful simply because uh, even a kid would know it, it, it would be successful with money enough to, 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 to push it. Uh, even a kid will know that that would be successful because the companies that are already there are all, all failing for repeating what they've been doing over time and not paying attention to the fact that they should redesign their processes, redesign their network, and redesign the scope of their business. Uh, considering the world has changed, uh, new technologies available, new interests are by customers are available many times shaped or changed by technology, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, startups. When the start, uh, when they start out, they are disrupting everything. Well, when they too they become like. Uh, yeah. Then they are not startups any longer. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they follow ex- the same rule. Exactly. They, they will follow the same rule. And some startups they start uh, they come during the hype. Uh, for example, uh, in 2014-15, machine learning was a boom. Mm. All startups came on machine learning, machine learning, seed funding, VC funding. Yeah. Majority of startups now disappear. Yeah. We yeah. should not be even in startups. We should be well, a company. Yeah, but st- st- startups depend on money of others, and the money of others uh, uh, is more abundant or more scarce in different times. So it's it's really only a, a way that the market finds to transfer money from those who have a lot of money and don't know what to do with it yes, to yes. people that have a lot of ideas but don't have any money. Sometimes those ideas are converted in, into more money, which will feed the system. Sometimes they will break, but it's part of the business. You know, uh, my my the time that I spent there in, in the, the Silicon Valley, uh, most of the, the most of these uh, um, what do we call the, the these investors, they of course they analyze your your business plan, they analyze your company to see if it's worth the investment that they're making. But at the same time. If, if, if you ask them, what do you think my chances of, uh, of success are, they will say 5%. And they say, don't worry. Well, maybe you should worry. Don't worry about me. You know, I'm, I'm investing in your company and I'm investing in, in 20, other, uh, 20 others. One of them will succeed. You know? And that one that succeeds will pay the bill for, the, for all of the others. Uh, will, will pay for the, the, the bill that my expenditure. You're concerned about your life after you pay, right? Uh, and there are even a, a lot of, um, of uh, entrepreneurs who are, uh, I mean, if, if you ask what their profession is, they are startup people. They, they start up a company, they run the company until it's, well, it, it succeeds, and then they sell, they, 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 they sell it and start another company. Or, you know, they, they get out of that because it failed, and they start a new one, and they, they ask money from the market again, saying, now I'm, I'm more experienced. I have already failed, so I know what not to do. And then, then the guy says, oh, this guy is good because now the chances of his, his or her company to, to succeed has increased a bit. I, I, my money is sort of, is a little more guaranteed there. In, uh, in India, uh, the beauty business was growing mm-hmm. for the last three years, the beauty business. Yeah. And then there's uh, this startup called Nika, uh-huh. which came into the market around five, six years ago. They captured the market, they published the law, they took some actors as their advisor, uh-huh. and they went to the IPO. And they hit 20 billion. Done. Now stock went up. Investors took all money out. Now it went down. It's, it's a big scam now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many, many people are doing that kind of scam. Startups, they say. 
Yeah, but this, you know, if that, if that happens three or four times, it, it, people realize it's a scam. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, people don't want to lose their money forever. But in the Silicon Valley, what people do is that they, they're, they're not bothered with losing money in one company because they're playing with the statistics. Okay. okay? Uh, it's, it's a different logic. Uh, it, it hasn't worked anywhere else except there, um, at least until now, I think. Well, China does a bit of that. China has mimicked. He's working in Lagos also. Pardon? He's working in Lagos also. China is working in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, the startup uh, hall. Uh -huh. We are getting a lot of funding, close to, is it 3 billion? Uh, China funds a lot of startups. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Source call, uh, is, it, is it China? Source call. Source bank. Mm -hmm. Source bank. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 3 billion. All right. Okay. And then. Uh, the money for the money for funding. And then, which is oh, our <laughs> last paper for today. We may have to come back. Uh, uh, to this uh, early on on Wednesday also uh, but I just want to give you an idea guess who the authors are Anko Anko is here again you know this this is pardon yeah uh, so so if you so if you find painful to read these papers you you tell when you go home. Uh, I I like this paper uh, for one special issue. Uh, this was the paper that helped me uh, think of the whole program for this class for for this course. Uh, these guys in nineteen this is nineteen ninety eight. Right? They thought well, digital transformation is happening. They didn't have that expression for it, but they they, they realized well it's clearly here the companies are going to change because of these new technologies that are around and how will companies change they said they will change in the way they interact with their customers okay sorry this first uh they, they, they call it three vectors customer interaction they will change the way that they organize their their assets asset configuration and they call it virtual sourcing because they're already thinking remember in the other model their own model there they said we have to redesign our network, right? So this asset configuration means redesign the network, uh, considering that now things can be virtual. By the way, look at the title that I had for this paper. It's, it's a very cool title for for 1999 uh, paper, right? We're talking about 25 years ago, almost. Real strategies for virtual organizing. If someone wrote a paper with this, with this title to publish now. Of course, for people who don't know this uh, previous paper, they would say very original name, right? But it's 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 been there, right? And uh, they say so. Pay attention to the to the to your customers and see how you can use technology to improve the experience they have with your brand. Pay attention to to your processes and see if you have to redesign the process, if you have to redesign your network, right? Asset configuration and think of how you're going to manage the knowledge that is generated from this virtual um, from this virtual organization right a virtual organization is is different to, to a real organization in in ways that make uh, this knowledge uh, management magic a virtual organization uh, leaves leaves a what we call a, some some footprints behind whatever action you take right whatever we do online leaves a footprint okay uh, think for example of a tennis shoe shop not the Nike the virtual Nike but think of a place where you go to buy some Nike here in San Sever, San Sever right in the shopping center you go there uh, and you want to buy some tennis shoes the guy brings you a couple you try them I don't know they don't fit well on your foot or you don't like the color or whatever they go back to the shelf, you go away from the shop. What information was left behind? No. None. 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 Maybe, may, maybe, well, the, the, may, maybe if, the, the if that clerk, if that uh, attendee there is a... You smell. Pardon? You smell. <laughs> what is... Uh, no, no, you smell. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I thought you asked male, no, no, and he's talking about no, no, no. your smell. <laughs> Number and we can put in the 
that each number is the people are buying. Well, there's no footprint of the person. Yeah, but no, notice that things have to be done manual, and and they depend on the goodwill of the the salesperson, right? Uh, he could uh, he could notice. Gee, this guy was trying to buy uh, shoes here. There's all other sizes are there. His size isn't. And you know there were three other people that had already come for that size. We are missing sales. Maybe this guy could make a note. And but it's it's poor information in in a poor uh, you know poorly organized, difficult to to help anyone take a, a, a decision. Uh, but in, in in our systems, it's different, right? So uh, there's there's huge possibility of improving our understanding of our own business simply from the footprints that everyone lives in, in our systems. Uh, so we, we can learn from, from our customers, but we can also learn from our suppliers. We can learn from, actually, we can even learn from our workers, you know, from our employees. There is part of it, of course, what they're doing, they're doing. But there are things that we can learn from them to decide on future high, hires or, or whatever. And all of that, today, we it's, it, it is traceable. Using uh, digital systems makes knowledge management uh, much easier, right? There's, there's, there's always some footprints that is left, and of course, if we plan for those footprints, then they become even more available, and we can take even better decisions based on them. So, for me, these three uh, uh, vectors here—they call vector one customer inter interaction, vector two asset configuration, and vector three knowledge leverage. Those uh, vectors inspire the way I organize this course. You will see that, soon, that on sorry on on Wednesday. Wednesday morning we'll be talking about customer interaction, in, in, in and and then on Wednesday afternoon we'll be talking about uh, so the ways of connecting to, to the suppliers, right? And on Friday we'll, we'll try and talk a little bit more about knowledge leverage. Of course, in a paper written in, in 99, some of the boxes that they that they consider three different stages for each one of these uh, these vectors here. Well, they could not be. They're not. Uh, how do you call it? magic uh, crystal 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 ball readers or something? They 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 they, they could not if, if they were to write this paper 20, 20 something years later, they would pro this model would probably be a little different. But I still love it for the fact that you know I can give this to executives and companies and say, come on, can you do this at least? If you haven't done it so far, can you? You're only twenty five years late. You know, uh, can you start doing it? Uh, for example, they say that for the, the customer interaction, they say it's good that if you can provide. A remote experience uh, of uh, your customers with your products and services. Right? If we were th to think about Nike, Nike was not only showing their products online, which is very basic, uh, even at the beginning. At this time, remember, the late 90s, the internet was still in its infancy. Notice this was published in 98. 98 was the year Google went into operation. So, you know, the year that these guys were publishing this. We didn't even have Google. So what do you think that uh, you know the, this digital world was about? But these guys were already saying you have to promote your uh, your customers' experience. You have to, sh to give them uh, the possibility of understanding your products, of de playing with it, uh, and then see how interesting this is. Uh, the a second stage would be dynamic customization. It seems that Nike read this right because dynamic customization is something that Nike, for example, can do in those tennis shoes that are made to order uh, based on what based well based on the first step first and second step here of, uh, of the second uh, uh, vector uh, they say you wanna you wanna sell a customized product it will have to be modular why because modules when, when your product is made up of modules you can reorganize these modules in several different ways and get to several different products right uh, so, the fact a, a product being modular means that it's not one solid block. It's made of pieces that are put together according to the customer's will. Isn't, but isn't this already uh, the, what, a t what tennis shoes are, for example? If at the beginning, it's, it's a lot of uh, pieces that have to be put together. Right? So, instead of putting the pieces together and then pushing that to the market, pushing that through uh, to, to, to to customers uh, and telling them, yes, what you want is a tennis shoe, uh, a, a gray tennis shoe with an orange, and I'm, I'm looking at your tennis shoes just to get inspired, with an orange uh, uh, lower part uh, and with uh, with the laces in black and gray. 
if they push that to the market, it, it, it's on the shelf. You can only accept or not. You say, yes, I'll take this or not. But if instead of doing that, they have all the modules and say, choose among these modules how you want this product configured, then they can, then you can have, uh, well, they, you, you, you can have a, a product that is to some extent personalized and they have, notice that they start having information here because the information that you generated in this dynamic customization process will also feed this third uh, vector here of uh, knowledge leverage because you will learn from your customer what his, per, his or her preferences are and then depending on that you will decide on uh, what you're going to produce to other to other customers in other markets okay uh, so notice that uh, I've already covered two of these uh, sourcing what after I source modules I can work on process interdependence meaning remember the redesigning the processes and, and things like that uh, I can think of processes happening in parallel even if they are happening in different units or even in different companies right I do one part you do other part because we know that they match one another uh, and at the end for example at, at the end I will, the fact that our process there's process interdependence may lead to what they call a resource coalition a resource coalition is a situation in which you have different <coughs> suppliers all working together to, to obtain a product uh, and uh, and the customer doesn't even realize that there are several suppliers working on that. This will become very clear when we read uh, the interview with Michael Dell, because Michael Dell says, you know, uh, uh, someone buys a computer from Dell, they don't realize, but the well, the the computer, the the main, uh, well, the box with the motherboard, and that will be shipped from 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 Texas. Uh, the the monitor will be shipped directly from Sony in Mexico. This is to, to, to the American North American market, uh, and there, there's going to be a company, a logistics company, that will get part of the product at one end, the, uh, or, or the other part at, at, at second place, and will, and only when those uh, all those parts are together in the city of the person, they will deliver to to the person's home, and the the the, the person doing the delivery uh, will have their name and a tag in which it's written Dell but they're not Dell employees they they work for a third-party uh, logistics supplier everyone works as a resource coalition which means very very good uh, coordinated processes that do not allow the customer to feel that you know the the, the work has been split among uh, several suppliers because that's a hassle right when you, when you buy something from one company and then when you have a problem, you go there and complain and say, oh, look, you bought it from me, but you actually now you have to demand those people there because they are they are in charge of that. And you become the manager of a poor, uh, a, a, a poor process uh, that was, was organized by the by your supply. OK. Um, so this is a, 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 a basic idea. I, 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 I don't I this today. I would not talk about customer communities here, but at, 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 if I were building a model like this, because I don't see this as clearly as in, in some uh, some time ago, maybe some 10, 15 years ago, there were a lot of customer communities happening. But he, the, the idea of the author here is that, well, customers are going to organize themselves in communities. And you know what you have to do? Be part of those communities. Be there as a, you know, as if you were also a customer. Don't be there as if you were you, because then they will know that you're there. And then they will, they will not uh, say the truth. But be there, checking what they're saying about your brand, about your product. Uh, a few years ago, I, I worked uh, in a private um, university in Brazil, and the, the dean of the school, he spent most of the time on uh, a platform that uh, well, our Indian colleague, colleagues and the Brazilian ones will know for sure, Orkut, or you don't. Do you? No. No, you don't recall Orkut? Or Orkut was the, the, the Facebook uh, pre uh, a previous or, or could was Google's yeah. f Facebook before Facebook existed, right? Uh, and it was uh, when I said that you would uh, you you would also identify with it because uh, Orkut was really successful in India and Brazil, but it never caught as, uh, okay. and, as something really really big elsewhere. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, at that at that time when Orkut was like uh, let's say like. Uh, well, it's, it would be like maybe Instagram now, not even Facebook any longer. Right? Uh, 
But it was a community, it was a place where people exposed their ideas to their friends and there were, there, there were actually communities, you could make uh, communities. That, and, and he noticed, he realized that the students had created a community of students of that university. And he spent, each time I went to his room to talk about anything, he was always there on Orkut. And of course, everyone thought that Orkut, the same way as someone who spends their, their whole life on Facebook or Instagram, I always had a go on him and said, come on, that's not work. You are, what you're doing there is uh, you're having fun in your work time. You're, you're, you're my boss, but I have to tell you that that's not, that's not work. And then he told me, that's actually my work. Uh, he said, you know, this is a community of the students. When I go to their classrooms and ask them, what are the problems that you have? Uh, are there things that you want to, what thing do you think that the university needs to improve and whatever? They tell me about a few things. Some of the, the ideas that they give me are good, but I prefer what they, they say here in this group because they don't know that I'm here. Uh, I'm here as if I were one more student. And they, when they're complaining, they are, I mean, when there's only one person complaining about something, the others already say, oh, come on, you're, you're being too... And there are other times that everyone agrees with that guy. And that's the time that I have to very quickly manage the situation before it becomes something unmanageable. So, of course, I'm talking about university. For a university, the students are, let's say, the customers. Uh, and their impression about the quality of their education is important to the dean, right? But we could be talking here about any other uh, company that could, have, could find ways of making sure that their customers interacted among themselves, giving each other ideas about their product, complaining or doing whatever, uh, and the company could use that to, again, provide information for the third vector. Uh, well, we'll leave the, the, the third uh, vector to discuss uh, more, maybe more thoroughly on, on, on Friday. Uh, and, and, and these two other vectors we'll discuss on Wednesday. Uh, I just wanted to very quickly show you uh, what we had, have, have planned here. We, we are going to change our timing, right? We are, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, these, these are the ones that we just talked about. So down, downstream, the value chain, we all, always think of, uh, of the value chain of, as, as being the, the whole uh, well, supply chain. Remember, in, in one of those Venka Truman uh, papers, when we redesign the network, we are actually redesigning the, the value chain. So, so downstream, the, the value chain means downstream thinking as if, if we were thinking about a river. If we go towards the direction of the, the ocean, uh, downstream the value chain of a, a corporation, we will get the customers, right? So it's a term that people use many times. So if, if we're thinking downstream, we're, th we're thinking about the customers. If we're th thinking upstream, we're thinking about our suppliers. So we'll, we'll be discussing uh, on Wednesday, uh, the uh, Wednesday morning, downstream the value chain. We have this paper by Makina, 1995. He almost doesn't talk about the, he doesn't refer to the internet, but at the same time, he's talking about the internet all the time, sh showing how companies should deal with, uh, with uh, their customers. Uh, and then we have another, is this, may, may, maybe this is your, your relatives here, Nambisang and Nambisang, considering that Venka Truman is already his uncle. I don't know, is, is Nambisang from his part of uh, India or not? No. no. Also, also? His part, no, Nambisang, no, 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 Nambisang is not. Is there, no, no, he's, he might be a Tamilian. I think, yeah, he might be a Tamilian. He's a South Indian, yeah. Okay. Yeah, from his, uh, All right. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't matter where good ideas come from, yeah. right? It's, uh, the, the, we uh, welcome Indian. good ideas yeah. from anywhere. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they, they, they discuss here the possibility of a, a virtual customer environment. We'll do this too in the morning. Yeah. And then uh, in the afternoon, in the afternoon, we'll do uh, the, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the upstream uh, in two two sessions. The first part of the, the the afternoon on Wednesday, we'll play a game. It's the beer game. Don't, don't get too excited. Virtual beer, <laughs> virtual beer, but it's the beer game. And then in the second part, we will discuss. Oh, sorry. Uh, why, what, October 9th? Have I done? What is this wrong here? Uh, October 12th. Oh no! Oh, upstream. So we'll do only on on Friday. Sorry. Yeah. So so we'll, we'll do the maybe we we can advance it a bit. Let's see. Uh, so the, the reading that I wish you can do for, for Wednesday is this, these two papers here, Makena 95 and Nambisan and Nambisan 2008, all right? So try, try, and try to, I mean, try to read uh, all if you can, uh, if you can't read whatever you can, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll benefit a lot from that. All right, any questions so far? Any ideas?
Well, is it okay if I do, you know I, I'm 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 sitting still more more than I usually do, but it's because I want to to record this. But is this okay or does it get to? Is is it okay? All right, so we'll we'll keep like that, uh, and I will see you then on. When <laughs>